Hey everybody, welcome to Spiky Saturday number 244 on the Mana League. I'm John as always, and we are going to draft some more Akoria over on Arena Mecha Godzilla. Hurrah! Uh, we're going to try something out as well. I went into my collection and found a way to turn off the default card style for a couple of the Godzilla cards. I didn't go through and get them all, but I got Mysterious Egg, which will probably show up. So if we see Mysterious Egg without Godzilla art, we did it. Um, but yeah, Coria, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, probably unsurprisingly, it feels kind of a little bit like Unstable, um, but we'll see. We'll see how long it stays for. And let me just shut off the Facebook noise, as you might have heard in the background there. All right, we got ourselves our pod, and we'll give it a go. Yeah, so it's the complexity thing for me. I, I enjoy it, but I could see getting tired of it. Um, I think there's only so many times that I'm going to get blown out by not knowing what to, what everything a mutate creature is at that moment in time, but we'll see. We'll see. Don't recognize any names. So pack one, pick one. We get ourselves a Cub Warden as our rare, which is a totally solid mutate creature. Uh, white isn't exactly the mutate colors, but you'll take it and you'll play it and you'll enjoy it. Um, beyond that, we have a Blood Curdle, which is probably the truest, most competitive pick here. Um, so Cub Warden, 3-5 for 4, which is not great, but it's lifelink, which is fine. Uh, two white-white, though, to mutate it onto something, and you get two 1-1 one, one lifelink tokens. I do think Blood Curdle is the correct super-duper mega competitive pick, but we're going to take this Cub Warden. Coming back around on the wheel, I think people have started to actually take this card instead of letting it go 8-pick deep, but we might get back like a or maybe, or a gust. But let's take the cup board and see where we go. Uh, we get a triome, not interested in that terribly. We get past a blood curdle. What uncommon do you take over blood curdle? I guess maybe parcel beast, maybe the felidar. There's probably a few things, but we're going to take this blood curdle, obviously. Past a blood curdle. Could have had two blood curdles. Pack one, pick one, pack one, pick two, but. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Bit of a train here. I do like seeing everybody, but of course, with such a large population, it's rare that I actually know anybody. Uh, we got a Farfinder, which is the easy pick. Um, another Triome, currently in our colors. Uh, Sanctuary Smasher's fine. It's a fine cycler. The cycling deck obviously is a, a giant boogeyman at the moment. There's an Essence Symbiote if we think we're going to get mutate -y. I think Farfinder is the absolute safest pick here. It's going to go in literally every deck we play, and I don't feel like we're losing out on anything in this pack. Yeah, not at all. Here, can we start to solidify in things? Well, we get past a Ram Through as well as an Alert Heed Binder. Um, so Alert Heed Binder would obviously go in the Vigilance deck. It, it is the uncommon Vigilance payoff. Ram through is a card people still aren't respecting. I, I got these on stream on Wednesday uh, on the wheel <laughs> multiple times. Um, it's probably the best green common. Uh, it's just fantastic. I think we could take this heed bonder though. It is a totally fine card. And if we're white black, we can still 100% play it. Um, yeah, I don't know about jumping into green just yet. Let's see where we go. Let's see where we go. Here we get nothing that's really pushing me anywhere. There's a Bastion of Remembrance, which is okay. Uh, we could play that if we're going to be perhaps black white humans. Helica Glider is a totally fine white card. I would play that. In fact, it would be great to jam the Cub Warden onto on turn four. Uh, Plummet, Thwart, Goriak, none of these are exciting. Spell Eater, Sails, nothing here is exciting. I think I might actually take this Glider. We don't know that we're black. We don't know that we're the deck that Bastion will actually be decent in. Um, although, I mean, if we're Cub Warding, Cub Wardening mutating. Let's take the Bastion. Let's take the Bastion and see where we end up. So we're looking for a little bit of a go wide-ish kind of plan here. So we get a Cavern Whisperer, which would also work with uh, Cub Warden uh, as another way to mutate onto the Cub Warden and get more tokens. There's a Checkpoint Officer, uh, Snare Tactician, both of these are solid. Uh, the Cycling deck, as I said, is the Boogeyman, and it's like 10 minutes away 
from just being so massively overdrafted that there's no point in trying because you and seven other people at the table are going to try for it and none of you are going to get it. Um, for example, we've seen no one mana cyclers come through, which means somebody at this table knows what they're doing. Let's take this Whisperer. Let's just try to dodge uh, uh, that deck entirely. This is a pretty late Sanctuary Smasher if somebody is in the right red-white cycling deck um, or the Mardu cycling deck or the red-blue cycling deck or any of these cycling decks that exist. We get a Blitz Leech, which I'm not stoked on. It's not my favorite thing. There's a Regal Leosaur, um, which we could mutate as a white card, but I, I've been super unimpressed by it. The fact that it says other creatures really hurts. Um, ba ba ba. Ba, ba, ba. I think maybe we take the Bloodfell Caves, actually, because we look like we're going to be black, so maybe we want to splash a red at some point. So let's grab that. Here we get a Call, or a Checkpoint, or a Will, or a Bushmeat. All of these are decent, actually. Um, so white has not really shown up. Unfortunately, that Mutate is not super splashable. Um, let's maybe take the call here. It will help us cycle our little creatures. If we are going to be like a black, white kind of humans deck, then we'll probably have cheap things and it'll be nice to get them back. Here we get a memory leak, which is a one mana cycling spell. And actually there's another one cycling mana spell. So maybe there just weren't cycling cards in those packs. Um, so I think we'll take this me memory leak. Uh, it's going to draw us a card, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80% of the time. And uh, the other 20% of the time it'll be a, a thought seize better than a dark bargain and we could take a blossoming sands here but let's take the memory leak Let, let's solidify ourselves into a color there's the helico glider that i was thinking about earlier if we are in fact going to be white we still don't exactly know what our second color is but let's take the glider Let, let's try to push into white because we do have the the white cards we've got a green white land here if we're going to be uh you know black white splash green perhaps and there's nothing else here that i'm missing um, not much here. I don't really want this solid footing. We'll take it, but I'm not going to play it. Another Helica Glider or a Night Squad Commando. Night Squad Commando is obviously going to work for our Bastion plan, so we'll take that. Super late checkpoint officer, don't mind if I do, and a Frenzy Drafter. Okay, okay, pack one. Here is a dumb card, so I have to actually... So this is Snapdack, so this is the... Uh, flame tongue kabu helix that's already in our colors <laughs> perfect super perfect yeah we're gonna take snapdax here um, beyond snapdax there's not much for us this pack's actually it's okay for the next couple of people somebody will get an essence scatter somebody will get a ramp through and then this pack dies just dies off but let's take snapdax and um yeah we're, we're gonna be black we know that probably going to be white and we'll splash red welcome to the team snapdax uh another call a dranith healer a day squad marshal a mutual destruction i wonder if we can wheel this mutual destruction because if we are going to be making counter or er, tokens with cub warden and tokens with night squad commando and etc then we're gonna have stuff to throw away it's gonna be great it'll be great with another uh call of the death dweller too Call currently brings back Checkpoint, Helica, Night Squad, Heedbonder, Farfinder. Brings back a lot of things. This this healer though, one mana cyclers, shockingly good, even if you're not like getting paid off with the cycling. I, I think that's my big thing. I think I just have to respect the fact that in formats where cycling is a big part, you just have to take cards with the intention of many of your turns being cycle, 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 go. Or I guess you do it end of their turn. So cycle, 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 my turn. So yeah, let's take this healer. <laughs> wow. Just cut off, eh? Just cut off. We get a perimeter sergeant, which works. If we're going to be black, white humans, which I mean, human, human, uh, human, human, definitely not a human. Um, this will be a helpful card for us. Otherwise, it's just Blitz Leech. There's not much going on here. So let's take perimeter. Comes back with uh, Call of the Death Dweller brings back humans, right? It's definitely not depicting humans, but yeah, it brings back anything. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of any of this here. We could take a Blade Banish for the sideboard. I don't like main decking this. You know, like look at our deck. It hits one card. 
it hits one card. Um, despite this being the layer of behemoths, they just don't get that big. So we're going to take it and put it in the sideboard because I don't really want an unlikely aid. We'd play one if we were desperate for playables, but I don't think we'll end up there. Uh, we get a Bonders Enclave, an Evolving Wilds. I think I actually want the Evolving Wilds here just to make sure that we are going to get our red for snap tacks. Lurking Dead Eye is fine. Everything else kind of, fall, kind of falls off. And again, Bonders Enclave. We can activate this with one of our creatures on the battlefield. And that is it. Nothing else will let us activate. So let's just take this Evolving Wilds. And we're probably going to cut this Blossoming Sands. Black White Duel. Don't mind, don't mind if I do. Um... There is a black white crystal. Is a crystal better than a duel? I think it's not if you are flush with playables, which we're not currently, but we still have the rest of pack two and all of pack three. But you know what? I'm gonna take the crystal. I'm gonna take the crystal. It's not quite the Mardu crystal that we want, but it's two-thirds of the way there. Duskfang Mentor is great. We get to put Lifelink on our Helica Glider or on Snapdax or on our Cub Warden who already has Lifelink, but our Lifelink tokens can work. This is actually a great card for us. Super happy with the Duskfang Mentor here. Uh, okay, good to know. Doesn't work. So I went into my collection and I turned this off. Uh, I set the default to Mysterious Egg, and here it is, not Mysterious Egg. Not a fan of that. So we've got a Whisper Squad, but I haven't seen any before this. Um, if we could get more, it would be good. And, and Jubilant Skybonder is not actually doing anything. We have one flyer. So yeah, let's take Whisper Squad and see if we can find some more. The Daybreak, whatchamacallit, might have been a better choice there. An Oricorn's fine. I'll play an Oricorn. We can mutate it onto Snapdax or onto Cub Warden or onto etc, etc, etc. Plus, there's nothing else in this pack. Mutual Destruction did, in fact, wheel. Happy with that. Uh, nothing here. Let's take an Uncommon. Nothing here. Let's take a Dual Land. Nothing here. We're probably not going to play that Spontaneous Flight. And there we go. We've got uh, 22, 19. We need four playable cards. Wow. Holy three drops. Cub Warden, four drop. You are probably hopefully more likely going to be played as a five drop you're going to be played as a four drop you're going to be played as a four drop Ooh, Sabretooth welcome to the team this deck looks good this deck looks good we just want to like grab some blood curdles or something what the hell are you I don't remember you existing three two flash Whenever you cast another spell that has fl Oh, you're the rare flash payoff. I, I vaguely remember you. You're not worth splashing, though. Um, there's an easy prey, another Whisper Squad. Um, so again, these Whisper Squads, uh, I played with them on Wednesday in a deck that I 3 owed with? No, that was the deck that I 2 one with. It was a Zerda companion deck. And they were really good with three of them. First one sucks. Second one, I don't think is that good. Third one actually seems to work, but I think we're just going to take Easy Prey. It's removal. We are a little bit, a lot bit removal light at the moment, and hopefully it comes back around. And yeah, we're just not splashing that. So let's take Easy Prey. Uh, another Easy Prey. So we could have taken that Whisper Squad, uh, of course. Um, so we could take an Egg because we do have Mutate, 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 Mutate. It's only four Mutates. Yeah, I, I like egg a little bit better in like green blue. So we just have another easy prey, which I think we just take. Um, there's nothing else that I'm super excited about here. Yeah, let's take the easy prey. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Nothing incredible. We've got another mutual destruction, which is probably fine. Uh, so this will be this will be our 23rd playable card. Unbreakable bond. We're not cheating anything out really. So there's no point in playing that. Day Squad Marshal. I, I, I still would play one. We've, we've passed it a lot of times. But yeah, let's just take another Mutual. So there's a 23 card deck. So now we just want to polish and we're not polishing. <laughs> we have another sideboard card. Um, I don't think a Perimeter Sergeant's going to kick anything out. Well, maybe this Whisper Squad, actually. 
if we don't see like whisper squad in the next pack whisper squad in the next pack wheel the other whisper squad probably going to get kicked out and it makes sense to kick it out for another perimeter sergeant we're basically going to be black white human aggro which actually does really suck for our uh mutate creatures boo Boo, boo, boo. Um, so we've got a General's Enforcer, which we probably want to grab, making more uh, tokens for Mutual Destruction, for Bastion, etc. even though I would like this red-white duel. But let's take the General's Enforcer. And we're not playing the Whisper Squad. We're not getting the rest back around. It does not seem. Survey Thundermane is decent if we had enough cycling, but we've got one, two, three, four, five... Five cyclers, not enough for a Survey Thundermane. I think we might take another Helica Glider here just to cut uh, a creature or cut a human that we don't really want, such as the Draineth Healer. That way we do have non humans. Um, coordinated Charge is kind of what I was looking for if we are in fact going to go wide. So we'll take that and we'll take a look. Here we get a Caprador, which I don't really want. We'll take it. It's an uncommon for the collection. I'm not going to play anything else. Uh, Divine Arrow, pretty late. Ah, uh, Whisper Squad did come back around, but two is not quite what I'm looking for. So we'll take the Divine Arrow. Blade Brandish for the side. So 29, 26, we got to make three cuts. Um, let's take the Day Squad Marshal. Is it going to make the deck? It might, it might, it might, it might. We are pretty human-y, which does hurt our mutators. So we'll have to do some counts on uh, what we can mutate onto. And I assume all of these token makers make humans as opposed to making soldiers, or they make human soldiers. We'll take that bond. We'll take ooh, the red-white duel. Sweet. We got there. Get rid of this green-white duel. Ugh. Frank Owen, come on. Got an entire half a table waiting for you over here. Uh, what else are we cutting? Probably some humans that we don't really need at all. I guess we can uh, we can cut Memory Leak. There's a cut. Could probably cut the Crystal. I think our mana is decent, especially with that Farfinder. So that's 28, that's 25, so that's two cuts. Two cuts to make. What will we do? So we've got to make two more cuts. Um, we've got something like eight uh, non-humans. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we have eight. Hmm. We definitely got a little bit too few for these mutates, which kind of kind of sucks a little bit. And I don't want to cut them because we have even less for the important ones like King Caesar, not King Caesar, not King Caesar. How do I, can I, can I, yeah, there we go. For Snapdax, Apex of the Hunt. Um, obviously our humans are good, so I do think Perimeter Sergeant's decent. Uh, we are going to attempt to go wide and coordinated charge or perhaps just have, whittle them away with the Bastion. So what needs to be cut? Two cards, eh? Two cards. I guess we could cut an easy prey. We have destruction, destruction, arrow, curdle, maybe one destruction. Just because, you know, if we don't get a token creator down, it's much less good. And it's also not going to have flash. Yeah, it is just a bone splinters in this deck. So yeah, I think that first cut is the correct thing to do. And then we could cut an easy prey. Could cut an easy prey or perhaps one of these night squad commandos or daybreak marshals. Two, three for three plus a 1-1, one, one, or 3-3 three, three for 4 plus a 1-1, one, one, but this one doesn't always get its 1-1. One, one. Because it's got raid. I think we cut the commando. Okay, okay. I feel good about this. I feel good about this. I think it's going to be a solid 2 and 1. 
is my guess. But let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. We'll play and I'm going to need to add this to my fancy dancy tracking chart so that I know how many gems we've spent and what my record is. I went five and one on stream on Wednesday. It was quite fun. Uh, we're going to play first here, uh, but even going five one still has me down quite a lot of gems. Um, wolf. That's obviously not a smooth tanned. We're going to mull that. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll keep it. We still can't do anything, but we'll draw a card that we need, right? Sketchy-ish keep, sketchy keep, but I wasn't going to go to five. So let's go with the planes and we'll pass that turn. So I need to write this into here. It is April 24th today. Copying those lines. We drew a swamp. Perfect. Everything came up as we planned. This deck, we're going to say that it is uh, black, white, and a tinge of red. They played a checkpoint officer, eh? Well, we've got a general's enforcer. Put a stop to that a little bit. Uh, and we paid 1,500 gems for this. And did not get any gems ground. Black, white, humans-ish. Cool. All that is done. Gloom Pangolin, that's fine. That is A-OK. -okay. Um, crud. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Hmm, I would have taken a couple more like Survey Thundermanes. I wonder maybe does Black White not have great uh like two drop non-humans? Trying to think of them. Uh this is just to get a damage in. No, because I could just block and kill the officer. No blocks. No blocks. You've got a uh, a thing. What's the thing? You guys know the thing. Uh, so we've got a perimeter sergeant here. We can smash on in for two. What thing do they have? Divine arrow, I guess. Um, unlikely aid is plus two, plus o. Oh. Oof! All right. Just rip that, eh? Fair. Fair, fair, fair. Durable coil bug, sure thing. No touchy. Oh, tap? Sure. Get in for one. You got it. You got it. Well, here's my own checkpoint officer. And we'll pass the turn. Hmm. Bushmeat poacher, sure thing. This is going to be a weird match. This is going to be a match that just kind of goes back and forth. I'll take two because you can just get that back. So I'm not trading a creature here. Boy, 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 boy. We need to find them their land. So we'll pass the turn. <clears throat> we'll tap one of their creatures and then continue waiting. Oops. I always forget how arena works when I want to do things properly. I wanted to go to declare a or I wanted to go to beginning of combat step. Is there like an option that just shows all of the phases? No, no, of course there isn't. Um, all right. You're showing me that trick a lot. So show me the trick. Let's get that trick out of your hand. Will of the All Hunter, sure, used in the less than opportune way. It's much better to use it on blocks. But of course our opponent is in a dominant spot, so nothing really matters. Ooh. But what if I bring back a general's enforcer? And give it menace and death touch. What if indeed? Cycle the sandworm, sure thing. And then I'm sure on turn eight or nine or whatever turn it is, we'll draw our fourth or our fifth land. Right? Right? Please? Please don't unbreakable bond right here. Just give me one turn to rip that sandworm out. Oh boy, you are just super 
telling me about these combat tricks, aren't you? Or are you? Two, four, five. I'll take five. I'll take five. Because we need the General's Enforcer alive to get rid of the Sandworm, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. We We're back. I unbroke it. I didn't get to sideboard. I don't think we had a sideboard, but I accidentally pulled the cable out of this and the audio disappeared because that's what happens when the cable gets pulled out. Another excruciatingly bad hand here. We can't do anything. On the play, we can't do a damn thing. We have to find a white source in order to actually play that enforcer. I think we have to mull this. Unfortunately, there's no cycling. Uh, there is actually cycling. Ooh, okay. It might actually be worth it to keep it. Play the Bloodfell Caves. If we utterly fail on our first draw, we can cycle the charge and try to get back in this. Let's keep and go. I think we are a bit too humany for things that we want to be doing, like the Duskfang Mentor um, and the Mutate. But we also just can't draw lands properly to save our lives, unfortunately. So let's try to draw lands properly, shall we? planes on top and just make everything be okay hey look at that everything's okay everything's okay here how are you so we're probably going to go with the bastion here on turn three because we're not going to have a non-human to get value off the dusk fang easy prey is a cool card to have um unfortunately if they are playing planning to play a three drop next turn it's not going to help but we'll see we'll see Cycler Crystal, you got it. Get ourselves a 1-1. One, one. Off to the races. Now they did mull. Uh, was it to 6 or to 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ooh, missed a land drop. Okay, okay. We're, uh, we're pretty decent here now. So we get to smash in for 3. Cycle away. Sure thing. Should have cycled on their main phase. Um, if they had drawn a land, they could have played it. So... I'm not a huge fan of playing the Duskfang Mentor for no value because she's a 1-3 three for 3, which is awful. So I think we're just going to hold up Easy Prey. If we can hit something cool, if not, we cycle it. Gloom Pangolin. I think we cycle it. Can I remember from game 1 any of their 2 drops? Not super offhand. Game one was a while ago, and it was before the age at which we had ripped our mic out, and I had to spend two minutes figuring that out. Um, yeah, let's cycle the easy prey. Let's just assume they're not going to have a target. They would have played it by now, right? Call is cool. Call is cool indeed. Helica Glider can get lifelink off the Dusk Fang. So yeah, let's drop a Helica Glider, give it flying, and pass that turn. No attacks. So we just kind of need that glider to live. Please continue to live. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack in. Just on the off chance they have, have sudden spinnerets, I want to make sure that we can kill the pangolin in response. They're going to cycle a flourishing fox, sure. And they are going to take the two. So we'll farfinder, just make sure our mana is continuing to be fixed. Um, take action. We've got double white. We've got double black. Let's go for a black source because we have black stuff in our hand, I guess. And we'll pass the turn. Coordinated charge looks like a way for us to end this game, so we're definitely not going to cycle it away. They're going to call back their 1-1. One, one. Sure. Not going to do much until it gets bigger from cycling, and then we have an answer for it, so I'm not really threatened there. We're going to mentor onto the glider, get ourselves some lifelink. Smashy, smashy. Get a four-point life swing here. And pass the turn. I think our opponent's mana uh, has helped us out quite a bit for this game.
Don't touch my squirrel. You went and touched it, eh? Okay, well, that's a great thing for us to use uh, our mutual destruction for, eh? And no attack, sounds good, sounds good. Uh, so we don't have much that we're gonna do here. So I think we're just gonna pass the turn and then we can rip a creature out of their grave. Yo, oh, they haven't cycled one. We pass the turn and do nothing. That's what we do. We could put a counter on that glider just to pretend that we're playing magic and doing something. Um, we can pull a card out because why not? Uh, and now what I'll probably do as well is maybe just go for an attack with coordinated charge. We could really hurt their board quite a bit. Um, so it's not likely that they're going to return anything. So, I mean, let's just do stuff for the sake of doing stuff. Let's do like the literal worst mana sinks. <laughs> they're doing nothing. Let's get rid of the call. I did things. I, I activated magic cards. A majestic oracorn, eh? Well. Well, well, well. Well, well, welly well. Welly, welly, well, well. Let's mutate that onto the Farfinder. Gain ourselves for life. And then, I don't know, maybe we can just get the fox off the battlefield? They're going to cycle their coordinated charge, sure thing. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind getting the fox off the battlefield before it gets any bigger. So I'll happily trade here. Oh wow, they're going to give me two creatures? Sure. Sure. Kill two of your creatures and I gain a life and you lose a life? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And we can just bring back the fox. Go get a land. Let's go get a plains. Play that plains, pass the turn. Good turn, good turn, good turn. I liked it. Patega Tiger, sure thing. Not too much of a concern. Hi, Snap Tax, how's it going? Boy, you're gonna love being a Farfinder cat, dinosaur, elder, nightmare, dragon, something or other, and probably other things. Kill that. And then we're going to attack for two, it would look like. Because I assume they're going to chump snap tax there. Nope, they're just going to take six because they might not realize it has double strike. Down to four. Cool beans, cool beans. I think we're going to take game two here. So, you know, deck doesn't suck. Deck doesn't suck. Our opponent's land screw helped us quite a bit. Deck not awful. Now, hopefully it doesn't mess up the audio, but I'm going to need to turn this fan on real low because these lights are real hot. Let's see what that does to the audio. Okay, it doesn't actually add that much to the audio. Wow! Just utterly murdering snap decks. Sure, that's fine. You're going to go to three and be pretty darn close to dead and probably just dead with coordinated charge. You're going to flash in spring jaw trap. Sure thing. I guess you can activate that too. If you so want. But I think this charge is just going to be the end of you because you're going to have to activate that trap and then I'm going to activate my trap. You're going to Lurking Deadeye. Okay, that doesn't do anything. What do I want to show them? 
do I want to show them the blood girdle or do I want to show them the coordinated charge? Oh, they're dead anyways. Never mind. I don't have to show them anything. They are just dead here. They're going to take two and then take another one. Yeah, we got them. We got them. Showed them nothing. <laughs> Opponent at the last second there highlighted and read the Bastion of Remembrance. Um, okay, so we didn't get to check this out last game because I was busy with the microphone. Do I want to sideboard? I don't think so. I think we just want to draw the right order of cards. So let's draw the right order of cards. That's all we got to do. We could probably cut... I think there was a mountain in there. We could probably cut that mountain. I don't think we need four red sources. We just need three. Hmm. Good opening hand. Good order of the deck. Let's go. Good opening hand. Well, good land coloration and such. A um, little bit slow, but two drop removal, other removal, I think we'll be fine. drop the caves so if they drop something for easy prey we'll play a plains if they don't we'll play the wilds they play nothing so we're going to drop the wilds go get a plains and that will be that so we've got flourishing fox for easy prey we've got checkpoint officer for easy prey what else did we see what else did we see Not a ton, eh? Gloom Pangolin, I supremely don't care. Uh, let's get this Bastion down now so that we have it. And then we'll probably follow that up with a day squad. And uh, we're going wide. We're going real, real wide. Going to drop a crystal. Miss a land drop? No, there's the land drop. Drop the crystal. Drop a fox. Well, hey, there's a target for my easy prey. I don't want to do it yet. I'd rather them to, you know, cycle it up, get it big. They missed a creature on Adventurous Impulse. That's decent. Uh, we're going to get an attack in here because I doubt they're going to trade. They are not. We're going to drop this Marshal. And then, yeah, next turn we get a Glider and Easy Prey up. And this feels okay. This feels okay. Just don't, don't, don't go crazy with cards. Don't go crazy. It's not that crazy. Not that crazy. Opponent does not attack. Smart. Ooh, a mutate platform, eh? Well, we're going to drop the Savai. And we're going to drop the Helica. Give it flying. Pass the turn. And we've got our flying clock ready to go. Flying Clock is ready. Removal for any scary stuff. They're down to two cards. I won't say confident just yet, because of course anything could happen. If they kill this flyer, then we're just kind of twiddling our thumbs. But we seem to have started what we need to do. Drop this Perimeter Sergeant. Pass the turn. The Blood Curdle will make uh, one of our three drops really powerful. Call the Death Dweller. I was hoping for that. I was definitely hoping for that. Because we are going to murder it. Goodbye. Uh, alert Heed Bonder. We can cast it. It's not going to gain us any life or anything, but it's going to keep this board going real wide. We'll drop the Heed Bonder. And it's not other. I guess we do gain one life. It counts itself. Sounds good. Sounds good, 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 good. A land and another go, eh? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to attack. If I get fogged, I'm going to be very angry. 
I got fogged on stream on Wednesday. I was very angry. Fully grown? Oh no, what will I do? Um, what are you going to block? You're going to block this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, you're just dead. You're just dead. I mean, the alternative is I could blood curdle. I don't, I don't think we're getting blown out by this, though. Let's just charge. Charge! We got there. Cool. Wanna know? Deck actually is not too bad. We just gotta draw the stuff correctly, which we didn't do in game one. Wanna know? Let's go on into match do. Get my golds. Update my spreadsheet. One win, zero losses so far. All right. Deck, did you cooperate with the opening hand? I don't think you did. Um, we're on the draw, though. And we need literally any land to play either of our three drops. So this is one of those keeps where, you know, you got to clench your butt a bit. But... Should work. Should work. It's one of those not quite a mole hands. And hey, look at that. It worked. We got there. To make it the best possible, we just need a two drop. <laughs> Not a two drop, but that's fine. So we can go Helica Glider, mutate a unicorn onto it, possibly. They're mono blue at the moment. The monoist of blues. Uh, what if we first strike our Helica Glider instead, telling that otter that they otter be careful? Frostlings, rude. Super rude. Super, super, super rude. <laughs> Is our opponent just going to be monocolored somehow? Um, we are going to drop a Save Thunder, uh, Sabertooth, and pass that turn. And Missile Land Drop. That hurts. Oh my god. Okay. Yep. Frost links me up. I'll take four. You can draw a card. A land. Uh, I might just need to gain some life. B. T. Dubs. So I'm just going to gain some land. B. T. Dubs. Did I say land? Gain some life. Gain some life. We got a 4 4 Vigilant First Strike, so we at least get to attack as well. Um, gust of wind is going to blow us out. Boom. Makes life totals a bit different. Capture sphere. Pretty gross, but we've got mutual destruction. Take six, draw even more cards, opponent. Feels like the cheats. Um, so we could Duskfang Mentor and gain three. Um, I think we're going to Mutual Destruction. Stop them. Nope. I want to target the Otter. Kill the Oricorn. So we can at least bring the Squirrel back with a uh, Call. We'll pop this down. We'll get in for three. Tie it all up. I assume our opponent must be color screwed. There's no way they're mono blue. Also, unfortunately, I have to mute you because I don't want to hear your pet. So did we stabilize? Cycling a frost veil ambush, okay. They are looking for a land. I, it has to be another color that they're looking for. So 
cycling shark typhoon to just get a 1-1 one, one shark. Uh, I will trade. I will trade here. Taken two is fine by me. A cavern, a whisperer, eh? I think we actually just want to play that at some point, possibly. Um, so we could easy prey that shark and get in for three. Or maybe we do just mutate the whisperer. Yeah, I wish it had vigilance. I wish it had the vigilantes. Um, we can. We can. We can. We can. We can. We can. Yeah, you know what? Let's easy prey the shark. Smash in for three. If they think they're gonna race, they can try to race. If we can pop snap decks down, oh, there we go. They found green, blue-green, my favorite color combination so far in this set. And a pass of the turn. Boy, that feels like uh, like you have a counter spell, perhaps. So, so go ahead, counter my call of the Death Dweller. And we're gonna get back a Helica Glider here. Counter this measly spell, I dare ya. Uh, and we're gonna go with first strike. It's gonna prevent that frost links. And perhaps we trade. Let's go for the trade. Let's go for that trade. It's thinking through what tricks I could have. I could have uh, fight as one. Opponent just trades. That's fine. That's fine. And then another capture sphere. Spear. Okay. Well. Oh, they did. They discarded a symbiote at some point. Okay. 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 Fertilid. That's fine. I guess I don't have a target for my snap decks to mutate now. So we are kind of looking at dropping the Whisperer, I suppose. Migratory Great Horn onto it. Sure thing. Just going to get all the lands, are ya? That's a 5-6. I might have to say something about that. Well, they're tapped out. And look at this. We're going to lose, just like in game one, by getting stuck on four lands forever. Uh, Hexproof, sure, 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 sure. We're going to go with Day Squad here. Try to convince them that they cannot afford to race. You can see on the overlay down in the bottom left-hand corner here, we have a 57% chance of hitting a land every single turn. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Saturdays always the same, eh? We're going to jump here and really turn this race around. And by really turn this race around, I mean not turn this race around at all. Uh, well, we're obviously going to have to put down a checkpoint officer to keep the sandworm tapped down if we don't just die. And I don't want to play the Duskfang Mentor, but we may just need a blocker for the Terran and we'll pass. Woof. Well, might just be like match th uh, match one. Can't catch a break in match or in game one, but maybe catch some breaks in game two and game three. So one two drop is all we've seen so easy prey may be something we want to pull out perhaps uh in exchange for one of those mutual destructions um barf we're not winning this one we're not winning this one of one mind sure thing draw some cards 
Land for the turn. So one, two, three, we'd have three mana up. Uh, we could block and take seven. <sighs> I can't do anything against six toughness and seven power. It's just too much. Cavern Whisperer, I suppose, could block the Terran and not die. We go to four, but maybe we can attempt to claw our way back. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think our opponent drew a ton of cards, took massive advantage of us getting mana screwed for a while. And uh, we're just kind of out of it. They've still got four cards. Yeah, we're dead. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. That is Magic's mana system. Um, yeah, so mutual destruction in. Take. Oh, we've got two easy preys. Yeah, take that one easy prey out. And I think that should be. Oh, duh, duh, what did they have? All we saw was the worm. So I'm still not sold on the blade banish because all we saw was the worm, right? And I'm not putting in a blade banish for one singular card, not when blood curdle and mutual destructions do it just as well. So let's go back in and let's catch a break. Let's not get bad hands. Let's not get bad draws. Play in first and not a bad hand. So let's just see not a bad draw. I mean, it's slightly slow off this Duskfang Mentor. Because we don't really want to play it on three. Not with nothing. Uh, so we're going to pop that down past the turn. I really don't want to play it for no value. Maybe its value is that we mutual destruction it. Doesn't feel great. Ooh, well, everything just got better. No Essence Scatter. No Essence Scatter. Let's give it flying. Just pass the turn. There we go. No Essence Scatter, no scary stuff. Ooh, no nothing. Why, I do believe that smells like a counter spell. In for two? Can I have this? Why, thank you. What are you doing? Cycle? Suspicious. Very suspicious. All right, friend, what you got? A parcel beast? Well, that has to die. That obviously has to die. We're going to slam on in and divine arrow it. Pew. Divine Arrow that got rid of one of the best cards in the set that's not rare. And I guess we'll just Dusk Fang up the Helica Glider. Yep. Could have done that before combat if we knew exactly what was going to happen there. Not a bad start though. Frost Link's going to tap down the 3 3, I assume. Maybe the glider. Nope. The 3-3. Three, three. Sure thing. So I'm pretty happy to slam in for three and get a six-point life swing. Oh, are they going to ram through? Oh, no, they don't have anything. Oh, they can ram through the helicopter glider. Yep. Gross, gross, gross. All right, so let's go land for turn. Um... I guess we're going to Death Dweller back the glider. Give it flying again. And pass the turn. And now we're in top deck mode and our opponent is not. So that does not put me in a confident situation. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're one land away from Sandworm, but we have a great answer for Sandworm. God. <laughs> uh, whoever the hell thought that this could be an uncommon 
made a giant mistake and they found another one. Boy, I uh I would really love if Watsy Design would just stop <laughs> because I think they're getting worse at their job every year. Um yeah, we're going to mutual destruction this one. and get in for two but i don't think we're winning this game anymore i don't think we're winning this game anymore this card is nuts 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 i was freaked out by it during the set review had a couple people say ah it's nothing it's nothing it'll hit lands it's not a big deal you're complaining yeah tell me i'm complaining now six six flying drawing a card and putting a land on the battlefield well alrighty then Well, all righty then. Gaining life, and this one's over. We are going to be one and one here. Um, I, I don't see much of a way out. We are sitting at a 4% chance of hitting a Blood Curdle, 8% um, of hitting Blood Curdle and or Destruction. That's about it. Farfinder to try to get us a little bit closer. Um, I guess we can chump with our glider one turn. We have upped it to still an 8% chance of drawing those two cards. Of one mind, and uh, this is going to be the end. This is why blue-green is such a good deck. Oh, I want this deck. Can we trade? Can we trade? This deck's incredible. Parcel Beast. They had two ram throughs, two auspicious star exes. Migratory Great Horn. They're going to get two permanents off the top. Yeah, Starix was a, a mistake of a a mistake of a, a rarity. I think, I think it'd be fine as a rare. And I think you could actually almost make an argument for uh, for Mythic. Ooh, the the Ivy Elemental just disappeared, but now they have a Shark Typhoon for free. All right, so we're gonna have to throw that Glider away, and then again, just hope. I guess if if we hit, I mean, before the Shark Typhoon came out, if we had hit removal, we might have still been in it. But now that the Typhoon's out, I think we're even more toast. Even more toast. Did we up our chances? Are we at 10%? Nope, we're still at 8% to draw those two cards. And there is just nothing else that gets us back in, eh? <sighs> I guess we could draw easy prey and cycle it. Hey, now we have something else to worry about as well. Not good. <laughs> Powerfully not good. I think our opponent's afraid of a divine arrow. That is a Sabertooth, which can block the Sandworm. How are we still 8%? Still 4% on each card. I wonder if this tracker is not working properly. Is this math? 1 out of 23? Yeah, that's math. 4.3%. Parcel Beast. Our opponent could deck themselves. They're at 10 cards in their library, and they're going to be taking at least three out. One, two, three. Down to seven. Capture sphere of that. Uh huh. How many lands? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's say 13. 14, 15. I mean, they're, they're obviously not going to need to mutate on that Starx again, but they're getting close to uh, too greedily. Uh, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Our opponents had all the fun that I'm going to let them have this match. Uh, one and one. We lost. That deck was gross. And uh, yeah, Auspicious Starx slip. I really don't know what they were thinking when they allowed that to be an uncommon. It's... It's not magic that I like to play. 
Give me that at rare. Give me that at rare. Or better yet, mythic. For those of you uh, who didn't see it, they released... Oof. That's not a hand we can keep. Not at all. That's also equally awful. What's her likelihood of drawing a planes or a white source? Overlay won't work, of course. Why do I even use this overlay? It never works properly. Um, I don't think we can keep it. I think we got to go to five. Let's go to five. All right, there we go. Let's get rid of the charge. And I guess the Whisperer, unfortunately. Um, so they released their one of their, not annual, quad annual, I guess, uh, set design articles where they give you like comments that people had while they were designing cards. And Companion, they thought they had made really hard to justify using. <laughs> they thought using up a sideboard slot was super expensive. And it was just insight into how much I think Watsi's design has just kind of gone to hell in the past year. They're not consistent. They used to be really consistent. Now they're just not. Makes me kind of want to build a cube of this set and artificially change the rarities of cards. That could be fun. All right, we're going to bash on in for two. Uh, we've got a good start here. Despite our mold of, all our mold of five, if we can do you know, some good uses of blood curdle, you know, get some like mutated creatures off, you know, two for one, three for one with curdle. I might have a chance. Crystal, sure. Mm, Oricorn, don't mind if I do. Flying Vigilant 4-4. Four, four. Let's get on in for four and we're not tapping anything down, so let's get in for five. Good start, good start. Give me the best five drop creature in the world mutated onto Goriak so that I can curdle it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Uh, okay. So, two, three, four, five. Um, this is black, that is black. So they've got black. They've got black, blue, green. They can't bring that back just yet. Can't bring it back just yet. So I'm going to Oricorn. And then we could just play Snapdax. Not mutated, but I think that's fine. Because then, depending on what happens, we can just kill one of their creatures and smash in for potentially lethal? Lethal. Luckily, Brokos doesn't do anything when it mutates. It is just a Colossal Dreadmaw for five mana. I will happily take six. I'm at 22. A-OK -okay with that. Okay, okay, that changes your life total a bit. That is a 14-point life swing that just happened. Well done, well done. We're all very proud of you. Uh, so we're going to smash on in with our friend Snapdax and Oricorn. They're going to chump. That is fine. We're going to get in for four, take them down to 11. Oh god, it keeps lifelink. That's a problem. Um, yeah, we're just going to have to kill it now. Can't have them having... Uh, ooh, we get to give Snapdax Menace. Can't have them giving that indestructible with unlikely aid. They can't bring it back just yet. They don't have the double green... They have double green, but then they wouldn't have blue. Pardon? Oh, they don't need blue. Right, right. Green, green, black. Sure. So you've got a 6-6 six, six Vigilance Trample. Sure. I will gladly take six. 
gladly, 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 because you're dead, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To, oh, <laughs> they're so close to dead. They're so close to dead. So close to dead. All right, well, we're just going to come in for four and we're going to hold up checkpoint officer to tap down Brokos. I think we're still pretty okay here. And again, stuck on four lands. What is it with four lands in game one? Our opponent's on four lands as well, but... And I'm gonna have to mute you because you're Fox. Um, yeah, so let's tap down Brokos. So they're dead on board at the moment. They have to drop another blocker for snap tax. I would love a land so that we could put down Duskfang and get lifelink on the Oracorn or something and keep up the officer. So yeah, format wise so far, I will say that it feels kind of like Eldraine. I, I don't feel like there's any, you know, explicit, uh, don't you just lose? Yeah, you just lose, friend. You just lose. I don't feel like there's any, you know, decks that you cannot play that you should just avoid as much as possible. Um, that said, the red-white cycling deck has really killed my enjoyment in some matchups. Um, that deck is extraordinarily consistent when it comes together. And I think if people in the pod aren't fighting over it, it comes together really well and really easy. Um, I'm not a fan... I, I like cycling as a mechanic. I don't like cycling as an archetype because it tends to be massively, massively, massively too good as an archetype. So I would much prefer that cycling, you know, be in a set, but not be a deck. Um, it just, it's really frustrating to be, you know, playing magic and your opponent is like cycle and deal two damage and gain two life and tap and cycle and tap that and cycle and tap that and cycle and do damage and do that and do that and go and you pay for mana and put down a 4-4 four four and pass the turn and then they cycle and cycle and cycle and it's just it's a real imbalance of fun which i think is my go-to uh you'll hear me talk about that a lot i really want games of magic to be fun uh because i have you know a wall of it's pretty damn close to 200 board games at this point although a lot of them are expansions so they count in that number and a, a, not most a lot of those board games are really fun for everybody it's fun for it's fun when you lose um and magic i find s quite often is not fun when you lose uh, based on the matchups and boy just another awful hand no luck today no luck horrifying hand let's go down to five sure <laughs> well there's always game three. There's always game three. Let's play a tap land, pass the turn. Always game three. Coil bug, sure thing. Tap land, pass the turn. So we'll drop this glider with uh, first strike, I guess, to shut down that coil bug. But what if Farfinder? Let's go Farfinder, get a land out of our deck. Doesn't block as well, but comes back in for one. Great mutate target if we do hit something. Seems fine. Seems fine. And we want to grab a... I don't think it really matters. Let's grab a black source. And we'll pass that turn. Technically fixed our mull. We've only mulled the six now because we drew this card. Taken two. Can't stop me from taking two. Night Squad Commando. Gross. More lands. Cool, cool, cool. Let's drop the glider. Give it first strike. 
Uh, nope, don't attack. There's a 2-3. So we can block Coil Bug, we can trade one ones. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, opponent with the perfect curve outs. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to block with the glider so that we can bring it back as a first striking death toucher. Which, if they have nothing in hand, is going to be very good for us. Let's activate this. Let's go and get a white source this time. Let's do that. Bring back the glider. Give it first strike. So it's got first strike and death touch, which is terrifying. Please let it live. No, don't be mutual destructioning here. No mutual destruction. No ram through. None of that. None of those things I just said and put out into the world. None of them at all. No, nope, please don't. They're looking at their cards too much. It means they have mutual destruction. No, I don't think they have anything. All right, we're going to drop the day squad, Marshall. They've got something. They just paused. So cycling card, unlikely aid. Um, we know they have unexpected fangs because they played that last game. But it looks like for now, our first strike death touch is going to hold things off. So ain't that a lucky thing that we got ourselves into. Oh boy, a Majestic Oricorn. I mean, if they don't have anything, let's start going. So we've got a Menacey First Strike Vigilance Death Toucher. Which means they actually can't block or machine gun their entire team. So let's come on in for four. And let's machine gun them. Didn't think they'd block, but... You know, I had my hopes. All right, if we can just dodge removal, we've got a we've got a, an out here. Just dodge the removal. Blitz leech, sure thing. So we can. Uh, no, no, you don't want to do that. This still is first strike, right? <gasps> oh, I took my counters. It took my counters from me. Blitzleech takes the counters off? Why is there so much to all of these cards? Um, okay. So I think I'm happy to take six here. Not happy about it. I'd have to triple block to kill it. They could not bring it... No, they can bring it back. Because it's just... Okay, why can't I see... The rest of the card, thank you. Yeah, black, green, green. Yeah, they don't need blue. Well, I feel like we lose. Uh, what, uh, what, are we, what do we got? We got mutual destruction. Um, oh, we should take one of those easy preys out. We've got mutual destruction, blood curdle. That's about it. Let's take six this time. And then we can look at like double blocking next turn. Ooh, Snapdax, how's it going, bud? How's it going? We are going to mutate you. I don't. Oh, this has vigilance too. Never mind. I was like, I don't really want to fill up on the unicorn, but I don't have to. So let's go Farfinder uh, on top. Let's kill the leech. And then let's come on in for a whole great big bunch. Whole great big bunch. Okay, they're going to trade there. So we're going to get rid of that Goryak, and they're going to take six, go to ten. Seems good. Seems good. Seems, well, it was good. Now it's bad. Now everything is bad. Okay, yeah, your monstrous stepped. 
not a good card, but very good in this situation. So the problem with this card is sorcery speed, it's five mana. Yeah. It's not a great card, but our opponent put on a clinic with it there, gaining a billion and a half life. Um, so if we play Perimeter Sergeant, we can triple block and kill Brokos. They're going to go to 31, and they get to just replay it onto this Coil Bug that just came out of nowhere. Prior to that, they couldn't have done anything. All right, so we're going to go to 3 here. 3 to 21. I don't think we're winning this one. Jesus. Okay, combat tricks everywhere. So, let's get rid of the easy prey. Put in a mutual destruction. Be aware that our opponent is playing a ludicrous amount of combat tricks, which means our blood curdle can actually be incredibly good. Um, does this exile? It does. Oh, it does. So let's put in memory leak to perhaps get rid of Brokos. Let's take out an easy prey and another easy prey, because honestly, all we saw was coil bugs. Put in a mutual destruction. Uh, Blade Banish also exiles, also exiles and does hit Brokos. And maybe we're just not coordinated charging here. Maybe we're just not that deck in this matchup. Yeah, I don't think we're that deck in this matchup. So let's take that out. All right, I like these sideboards. I like these sideboards. Um, and I was also talking about taking out a mountain and popping in a... What do we got for swamps? Six, seven, eight, and seven, eight, nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yeah, we're going to go one more planes in there. All right, let's go with that. I like that sideboard. I think this is our best chance. But we are going to need to have our hands and the game of magic cooperate here. And it did. Got to find a swamp, which we can do off that far finder. If we top deck a swamp, this is incredible. And we just got to ask our opponent to not curve out. Uh, that's not exactly how I wanted to top deck a swamp, but it'll work. So third turn, what do? Third turn. Third turn. Helica glider first strike. Yeah, let's go Helica glider first strike. Shut down that coil bug. If we don't find that blood curdle though, our opponent's combat tricks are going to really ruin us. And I've got to mute you because of your stupid pet. Perimeter Sergeant A. So we can get an attack in here and drop an enforcer. Or we can use more mana and drop a sergeant. Next turn, we're going to be on five mana, which would be enforcer sergeant. Um, so yeah, let's drop perimeter sergeant here and Let's get in for two. I'll take two back if they want. We've gained two. Please don't broke us. Please just don't broke us. Gem Razor, okay. It's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. Doesn't have vigilance though, at least. Another coil bug, okay. Okie dokie. Taking that damage. Um, Blade Banish, well, that's the first start, eh? Uh, we're just gonna pass the turn here, see if maybe we can get, like maybe they'll do something to that Gem Razor. Like, let's try to get a combat trick out of him here. Just 
Show me that combat trick. Show me it. All right, fine. Get rid of those creatures. That coil bug's not coming back. Ooh, and a pass of the turn. That I like. That I like quite a bit. We are going to uh, drop a far finder, find a land, and then jam down a perimeter sergeant, I think. So we've got black and white, so it doesn't really matter what we grab. Uh, we've got white, 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 and black, black. So let's grab a swamp. Drop the swamp and drop another perimeter sergeant. And... I would love to get a combat trick out if they have one. Yeah, give me that combat trick. Give me the combat trick. Yeah, awesome. Let's whittle their hand down, make this Whisperer look amazing. What you got, friend? What you got? Monstrous frickin' step. Yeah, you are gonna gain 10. Congrats. All right, let's get the last card out of their hand. At least we can do that. What you got? A swamp. All right. Off to the races. Off to the races. Let's drop the enforcer. Pass the turn. Let's see what we can do. Zagoth Mamba. Not terribly scary. Alert Heedbinder will gain us some life. Um, just jam. Just jam. Oh, I did think our Enforcer was going to get plus one, plus one. I should read cards more. Um, do they have mana to bring that back? One, two... Oh, it doesn't come back until after. So they're going to have to actually pay for it, and then we can just rip it out. Try it, I dare you. Uh-uh. Nope. You don't get that back. I get a 1-1 one, one instead. Good try, though. Good try. Okay. Hold. We got there. <laughs> holy moly, holy moly, holy moly. Got there. That was game three, right? Please? It was game three. Cool. Two and one, precisely as I had predicted. Uh, our only loss was to the busted card times two of Auspicious Starix. That's got to be like the uh, uh, the Sir Conrad of the set, perhaps, although I think there's actually a lot of Sir Conrads in this set. Um, but yeah, two and one. Still enjoying the format. It's balmy. It's complicated. We'll see if I like it in, you know, a month and a half. Uh, do we even have a month and a half? What's a month and a half from now? End of May? Half of, yeah, a month and a half. I'll be... Uh, probably starting set reviews for for m21 we don't actually have much time with this set i suppose so yeah i'm enjoying it so far uh, i'm happy to keep drafting it happy to keep playing it uh even played it a little bit in my spare time and yes yeah, so we we earned a thousand gems off of that one put that into my spreadsheet and we're still down 20 bucks um yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed that hopefully you guys are enjoying Coria. Let me know all the crazy fun things you've done, what your opinion on the format is. Um, like I said in the set review, I was hesitant about it, uh, which was weird. I've never been hesitant about a set before at the start. I've hated them by the end, but I've never been hesitant and concerned at the start, and I was for this set. And it seems to have been mostly unwarranted. Having fun so far, so let me know what you want to let me know. If you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, you can always find me over on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. You can find me at patreon.com slash demandalink if you want to help out that way. Got a few new patrons, and thank you very much to them. You can join the patron discord, chat about beer and food and other games, and sometimes magic. Um, you work your way towards getting a Manalink playmat when you hit $60 lifetime. I've got to get some of those sent out from the past month or so. And uh, yeah, make sure you check out Twitch. We've had some fantastic uh, uh, audience sizes on Twitch the past couple of weeks i stream there over on wednesday afternoons i do shoot a message onto youtube when i am going live so go check us out we play marbles and uh you can win ink gaming play mats that way as well easiest way to help out of course is like share and subscribe but if you do have questions comments or suggestions let me know otherwise see you all next time